I'm thankful to have worked with many, many coaches for their website design, both in my template shop and for custom design. And if you do any type of coaching, mentorship, course creation, or anything educational, really, you fall into this category of someone who offers coaching to some extent too, and you will love this episode. So I'm sharing eight things you need on your website and in your marketing too a little bit that you might be missing as a coach. I'm really excited for this one. Let's dive in. Hey guys, it's Elizabeth McCravey and you're listening to the Breakthrough Brand Podcast. Each week, I'll bring you workshop style trainings that teach you how to stand out online, design success from the inside out and create a breakthrough business. It's time to turn viewers into raving fans and design the business and life of your dreams. I'm so excited you're here. Hello, hello, you guys. I hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday. If you're listening to this live or whatever day you are listening to, I hope it is just a wonderful day for you. I am coming off of being sick. So I'm really hoping it's funny, too, because Last episode, I talked about how I was hoping I didn't lose my voice. Well, I did. And I ended up uh, getting sick over a whole weekend and also a couple of days this week so far and had to miss some really fun stuff that I was looking forward to because of just feeling sick and losing my voice. So I'm hoping that my voice is back enough to do this episode because I'm really excited about it. And I can't wait too long to record it because we got to get everything processed and edited and all that kind of stuff. So Let's dive into this. Like I said in the intro, I do a lot of work with coaches, like life coaches, career coaches, business coaches, health coaches, nutritionists, counselors, yoga teachers, executive coaches. Those are just to name a few of the niches I've worked with. Seriously, so many people who fall into this coaching helping others reach their potential, specifically educating on certain topics, those kinds of people. And I love it. I love this industry. And it's work that I feel like I really understand and believe in. And it feels like my world, I guess you could say. So it's awesome that I get to design for people like this. And one of my favorite podcasts for years now is actually one for life coaches. It's called the Life Coach School Podcast with Brooke Castillo. And literally, I, maybe since I started my business, it's been a favorite of mine. I still remember when someone introduced me to it and they said, I was like, well, I'm not a life coach. Don't want to be a life coach. And they're like, it's actually not really for life coaches. It's for anyone. And they were so right. But I feel like that podcast, along with some of my early clients in my business, kind of launched me into this world. And I just really have a special place in my heart for people who are in this industry. And also for people who, I would say this also falls into the coaching industry, but like personal trainers, yoga teachers, nutritionists, people in that space because I actually myself worked in that space in college before I started my business. Uh, I was a yoga teacher uh, during college and actually right when I quit my first job and started my business, I taught yoga again then. And um, in college, I became a certified teacher and I love it. And a lot of my uh, freelancing clients when I was a college student were also in the wellness space. Like I worked with a bar studio, a health food restaurant, really a lot of bloggers who are in the health space at my uh, internship, things like that. So anyway, my point is I really love this group of people. So if that is you, get ready for my top tips because I've worked with a lot of people in this industry who are at the top of their game. And I feel like I've learned so much about what works and what doesn't and also what people who are in this industry might struggle with. Because as I work with people who are like, let's say a life coach in the one-to-one space or through my template shop, through like a polish session, that's where you work one-on-one with me after you've customized your template and we go and make final touches on it. It's really cool. But I work with a lot of people one-on-one basically through that and through my custom design. And I've learned like what the common struggles are that trip people up that might make you kind of struggle a bit on your website. So let's dive in. So the first thing you need on your coaching website, you need photos of yourself, not just stock images. And you might think, doesn't that apply to all websites, Elizabeth? And I would say not exactly. I think some 
types of businesses can get away with using only stock images or even using hardly any images. It really depends. And I'm never going to recommend to someone to use only stock images, like literally no matter what kind of industry you're in. But specifically as a coach, you cannot get away with just using stock images because people need to see who they are working with. And when they're reading about you and your services and all and your story and all of that awesome stuff, but you're just some mystery person that they've never seen or heard, that is not effective. And I also think it's really vital that these images, the images of you on your website are professional because unprofessional images really hurt the overall vibe of your website. And again, this is true of anyone, but I'm going to say especially for coaches, it's going to hurt your credibility as a coach when the images are like low quality iPhone photos are taken by a super inexperienced photographer who like didn't know how to edit. Those kind of things are really going to hurt the vibe of your site. And do not feel horrible. If that's you right now, if you're listening, you're like, oh my gosh, she's talking about me. Don't feel horrible. I've worked with so many coaches, both as template buyers and as one-on-one clients where their old website was iPhone images or like a really old corporate headshot or these photos their friend took that just weren't high quality or even just stock photos. And it's something that's easy to fix, but it's like insane how much it'll transform your website when you have better photos. You guys know I have some episodes about uh, getting photo shoots done for your business. And I like literally believe so much in the power of photography when it comes to website design. And sometimes we think it's all about the design, like, oh, I just got to get a good designer and then they'll fix everything. Like, no, it also is about the photography and the photography just plays a super huge role also as the design does, but photography is insanely important. So getting a new website or a website update is also a great time to update your images. I know for a lot of the coaches I've worked with for one-on-one work, when they hire me, they also hire a photographer and go through and get like a legitimate photo shoot done. Same for my template buyers. They take the website investment as an opportunity to also invest in photography. And you guys, investing in photography, it's not just for your website. It's for literally everything for your marketing. Like on social media, you'll finally feel like you have images to share. In your client welcome packets, if you get speaking engagements, your headshot, it just is worth so much. I'm clearly getting off on a tangent here, but if you need help with photo stuff, tune in to episode 15 and 16 of this podcast because those episodes will have you covered. They're all about how to plan a photo shoot, picking a photographer, picking your outfits, executing it, all of those kind of things. So that is number one. You need photos of yourself on your website, not just stock images. Second thing you need on your website, you need your coaching specialty stated clearly and simply in your tagline. So some of that might sound confusing. I'm going to get into it. So if you're confused, don't worry. Like I've said, I work with a lot of coaches and I've found that oftentimes This is funny to me, but coaches don't want to call themselves coaches because they feel like what they're doing is more than that. So they want to avoid the word coach. And maybe you're listening, you're like, that's not me at all. Or maybe it is you. I've just, I've worked with so many people where it's like, they don't want to call themselves a coach. And some of you listening might even be the people I've been like, call yourself a coach because I, um, I always end up saying this. So I totally get it though. If that's like you and you feel like you don't like that word, but if you are a coach, like that's actually what you're doing, then you really really need to say it. But oftentimes people want to be cutesy instead for this part and not say what they actually do. So instead you might want to say something like, I'm a strategic life transformer. You know, I've had someone who I've had people who want to say things like that. And it's like, that's not clear to the person reading your website. Like they are likely on your website because they are looking for a coach because that's the category you fall into. So instead of saying strategic life transformer, say strategic life coach or like something like that. That's not the best example necessarily, but the key is to use words like coach, business coach, career coach, mentor, even um, educator, whatever it is you actually do. And this statement needs to go on your website where your logo section is. And if you use one of my templates, you guys know I'm a website designer, have a template shop, tons of templates for coaches coming out very soon. So get excited about that. But right now there are some already some templates who that are just like 
perfect for coaches. And all of the templates in general, no matter which one you pick, there's always a logo spot on each of them that has a space for you to like type your name in or your business name, and then small text underneath it for you to put this type of statement. And the templates already have examples of like exactly what to do. Like you guys, I'm so excited about the new templates. I'm not really seeing the exact date yet that they're launching on this podcast, but they are coming soon. A whole new collection, a lot of great stuff for coaches. So if you are a coach listening, just watch out for that. But the templates, um, like I said, are really set up well for coaches and using a word like coach when in this tagline area that people actually know is also going to be great for your SEO because you guys, people are not searching on Google for a life transformer. Okay. They're searching for a life coach or a mentor or something of that nature. And you really want to keep things simple here because if you confuse, you lose and people are just going to click off your site if they can't figure out what you actually want to do. So I totally understand if you're like, you don't want to put life coach all over your marketing. But I really would encourage you to like keep that language on your website at some point, especially in your homepage, and especially in your logo. And there are variations of this that don't use the word coach if you're against the word coach, which I still don't fully understand why people are against using the word coach. I think it's like not wanting because they feel like they're more than that, I guess is the best way to put it. But like for me, my tagline as an example would be like brand and website designer, but I obviously do a lot more than that. It's like I'm a podcaster. I also do marketing and have done marketing for years. But like when I'm trying to be specific in a tagline, I want people to know that I'm a designer when they land on my website and I'll be like, oh, that's cool. She has all this random stuff. But like, what does she actually do? So like, that's what we're talking about here is you want people to be able to look at your site and say their coach or their counselor, or they are a mentor, if you like that language better. Just that kind of language is what we want. So that's number two, you need your coaching specialty stated clearly and simply in your tagline, not cutesy, okay, we do not want to be cute, we want to be strategic, okay. All right, so the third thing you need, you need a clear and aspirational message about what results you are creating for clients. And this is kind of like a fine line kind of talk here. So I'm going to try to like, make the best sense of this, but also know that this is going to be very specific to your business. And I love getting to work with coaches on this. It like literally I've worked with people on this messaging aspect in polish sessions for my template buyers, where like once they're done with their website, we kind of go back in and we're like, wait, is this the best way to say that? Is this the best copy? So I really love working on this. And it really, what you want to do here is going to be specific to your business. But basically, when you're doing your messaging about what results you're creating, you want to be aspirational, not negative. So you do want some negativity to some extent when you talk about where they're leaving from and where they're arriving to. But most of the time, people don't want to identify with things like losing, being stuck, sucking at something and things of that nature. So like as an example, that's too negative. If you're like big statement on your website says something like if you're filled with emotional baggage, you're in the right place. Like not not a great statement. Or I saw the other day someone I cannot remember who it was because I did not not click on it. But I had an ad shown to me on Instagram that literally said, do you suck at running your business Instagram, I can fix that. And maybe to some people that would work. But for my instinct, when I saw that ad is that no one wants to identify as sucking at using Instagram or sucking at anything in their business. So like, that's not the right messaging in order to get people to click on it. A better messaging would be something inspiring of where you're going to take them when it's that negative. So you don't want to be mean. Uh, you don't want to make people feel less than when people feel less than are you or made fun of or unwelcomed, they will not want what you're selling. And the reason I think this applies specifically to coaching is because you're often dealing with tough things like relationship issues, career shifts, depression, weight loss, um, overall health, a lot of like personal things in people's lives, things that aren't easy to deal with. But putting 
an aspirational spin on it will be really helpful. So you want to be aspirational in your messaging. And here are some examples I want to give you for some of my past clients and my template buyers who've done a great job at this, who are all in the coaching space. I'm going to read you some, obviously don't steal their messages, but these are just great examples for different um, types of coaches. So Lauren Seiden, she is more of a general life coach, but has niched down to some specific things, but her messages become the most inspired, connected and productive version of you. Like how inspiring is that? Like, don't you want that? The most inspired, connected and productive version of you. Jenna Viviano, uh, she's a career coach and just is incredible. And hers says, become an irresistible hire and build your dream career. Love that one too. Brooke Kalen, also a life and business coach. She says, become who you really are so you can be a magnet for what you really want. I also love that. See how, see what I'm saying about how these are like kind of like causes you can get behind is kind of how the statement sounds. That's another way to put it. So now I have two from two of my template buyers, Simply Defined Fitness. Shout out to Angel. Uh, she says, create the healthier body and lifestyle you crave. And she specifically is in the like health coaching space, um, personal training space. And is also just her website's beautiful. If you want a great example of the templates in action, Simply Defined Fitness. Um, but create the healthier body and lifestyle you crave. I love that one. Nicole Talks Love, also a template buyer, also a great example of the templates put to well use. Um, and she is a relationship coach. And I love this statement. Embody your femininity, confidence, and self-worth to attract and keep the relationship you deserve. Mm. So good. Okay, so those are just a couple that I think are really solid and excellent examples. And all the templates in my shop come with a spot to do this on the homepage. And even great examples of brand statements in the template. Like I am not just putting filler copy in, I'm actually writing you an example of what this type of statement can be like. And you want this statement to be on your homepage, like as the first thing people read, not like a bunch of teeny tiny text about like all the cool services you do and how I'm a life coach and I've been in business since 2015 and you know, none of that. Okay. You want a big old statement of like what you're going to do, what problems you're solving and something that like where you're taking people, what the transformation is. And the templates do have a great space for this on the homepage. And you want to use the same statement other places too, like in your Instagram bio, on your Facebook, like page description, uh, in your marketing in general, on other pages of your website. There's just so many places you need to use this. But the goal with this statement is to be concise, clear, aspirational, motivating, um, showing the transformation, make them want to be a part of what you're doing, not put down by what you're doing. So as I always say, if you struggle with this, I've said this so many times on podcast episodes, always when you're struggling with like your copywriting, look at your testimonials and inquiries. In those things, you can see what problems you're solving and where you're taking people. Like literally you can look, what are people inquiring about? What's the problem that they are saying they need help with that they think you can solve? And then looking at your testimonials, what is the transformation? Like, how did they word it? Like, if you're thinking like, you know, I read some of these and you're like, seeing Jenna's become an irresistible hire, build your dream career. Uh, we came up with that not, I don't remember if we looked at, that was a long time ago this project happened. I don't remember how we came up with that, but I can guarantee you like Jenna's clients have used this kind of language language in the testimonials for her or in inquiries that they really want a dream career using words like build like so specific but really looking at testimonials or inquiries is going to be huge for this one all right the fourth thing you need on your coaching website you need a blog where you can share free knowledge. So I believe content creation is vital in most industries, but especially in the coaching space, you guys. So if you're in the coaching space, do not ignore messages about how you have to do content creation. So whether it's blogging, podcasting, YouTubing, whatever it is, you need a way to educate people, give them wins through that free education and show your skills and basically like, Interrupting this episode with a suggestion for the small business owners listening. Ever wonder what you should do for healthcare when you and your spouse are both self-employed so there's no work-provided health insurance to participate in? 
Well, when my husband Adam joined me in the entrepreneurial job space over four years ago, we joined Christian Healthcare Ministries instead of getting traditional health insurance. And it was the best decision for us, especially in these years of growing and raising a family while also running multiple businesses. CHM is a health cost sharing ministry and is a faith based alternative to health insurance. We did tons of research before choosing CHM. And if you know me and Adam, you know we are all about doing the math when making big or small financial decisions. And even though it's not insurance, CHM shares 100% of eligible medical bills, which is more than the typical 70 or 80% of medical bills paid for by insurance companies. All sharing is determined by the CHM guidelines, which you can check out before and after joining. And for the mamas and mamas to be listening, you truly cannot find a better healthcare option for maternity care. I had a vaginal delivery and a C-section and birth center care and hospital care between my two pregnancies and births, and it was all 100% shared for. And outside of birth, we've had our share of emergency room visits and procedures as a family, and those costs were all shared by members at Christian Healthcare Ministries, leaving us only paying our monthly contribution. CHM is less expensive month-to-month than insurance, and because there's no network, you can choose your care with whichever providers best fit your family. I seriously just cannot recommend Christian Healthcare Ministries enough. You've got to check them out. Go to elizabethmccravey.com slash CHM for more information. Also putting that link in the show notes, Elizabeth with McCravey.com slash CHM. Now back to the episode. Show people why they need to work with you. So by creating content, it's so cool. You're creating relationships with people, with your potential clients before they ever reach out to work with you or buy from you. So it's like, you don't even know it, but you're creating relationships with them. It's the same with this podcast. Like I'm creating a relationship with you by us talking about this and doing it kind of to the masses because it's not a one-on-one relationship necessarily, even though podcasting feels that way, which is so awesome. So some things though, to shoot for your content creation. First thing, offer actual wins to your audience. So give broad coaching advice that will help people like I say broad still in your niche, but like broader, like not on a one on one basis and give people wins through that. So for example, my friend Jenna, who we mentioned already right above in the brand statement example, she's a career coach and she has a podcast about careers for people who work in like the career space, not the entrepreneurial space. And she gives people consistent wins through her podcast and through her blog before she had a podcast and also through social media and LinkedIn and all these places. And she's giving them a win without them having to work with her. And by her giving those wins, you better believe that when those people do want a career coach, they're going to her. And when they meet someone else who needs what she's offering, they're referring them to her. Like it's so incredible. So that's the first thing you want to offer actual wins. Next thing you want to let them get to know you. So So like I already said, content creation is a way to make a personal connection with your audience on the one to many level. And like, I cannot stress this enough, but I think people should show their personality more in their marketing, in their messaging, in their content creation. When I come on here with these podcasts, I am as casual as can be, even though I do always have an outline because being prepared and being casual are two different things. So I'm always prepared, but I am on here to like share my actual self with you guys. And I don't hold back on like the advice giving and I let you see my personality and that's how content creation should be. So as you think about your content creation, think about what stories you can share as a coach, like we'll get to this in a minute, but coaches a huge thing for you in marketing is going to be sharing your own transformation story. So like, think about how you can do that. Share some vulnerability um, in your content creation. The next thing you can do with content creation is push your services. So yes, you can blog or podcast about your services, about the wins your clients are having, about new things coming up, all of that things like that. And another thing to note real quick is that content creation, like blogging, podcasting, YouTubing, whatever, it's going to help you rank better on Google because fresh content, publishing new content is going to give Google a reason to go visit your site. It's going to help you rank for more topics and specifically writing about like a topic that you coach on means you're going to show up in the search results when people search for something related to that topic, whereas like your service page might not rank for it. 
if that makes sense. Like it's this is so true of my business as well. But like, let's just say hypothetically that you are a life coach for Christian women and that's your niche. And like you have that all over your service page that you like coach Christian women. But the time you're most likely going to get clicked on is when a Christian woman who wants coaching help is Googling a specific topic and using keywords that you have blogged about. And then that blog post shows up. Like for me, I rank for a lot of stuff through blog posts that relate to my offers, but aren't like my actual service page or my actual template shop. So anyway, it really helps with Google to do content creation, helps you with SEO, search engine optimization is what that means if you do not know. So you want to do content creation. And it's so important in the coaching space. So really do not miss this one. And if you are new to your industry, you're a new coach, just start with blogging. And if blogging feels like too much, start with sharing content in your social media captions, going on Instagram, doing some stories, giving advice. Um, You can also start with an email marketing freebie that's directly related to your expertise in another way. That's another option um, for a great way to get started. I have an early episode I cannot remember what episode number it is, but about email marketing and creating freebies and things like that. So that's a really great one to reference. But yeah, it doesn't have to be blogging or podcasting or a YouTube channel. It can start smaller, but you've got to create content that is going to lead you to so many clients. I can guarantee it. I'm going to interrupt these coaching website tips for a very relevant insider tip just for you. So you guys know I'm a website designer and I love creating easy to use show it five templates that are strategically designed to help you book more clients. That's always my goal. And I love watching everyone in the M shop template fam do just that. And you guys in a couple of weeks, I'm launching a brand new collection of templates to the shop that are perfectly made for people just like you, people who are coaches. And this launch is going to be huge. I'm packing in some awesome gifts and bonuses for you to go along with your purchase during launch week. So if you're interested, get the details here. Head to elizabethmccravey.com slash launch. That's elizabethmccravey.com slash launch, or just head to the show notes and click the link and sign up to be the first to know when the new templates go live. By signing up, you'll get to preview some of the bonuses and also get extra insider info like getting a glimpse at one of the new templates before it goes on sale. Talk about insider stuff. I cannot wait to show it to you. So join the launch list at elizabethmccravey.com slash launch. And I cannot wait to celebrate with you on launch day next month. Now back to the website tips. The fifth thing you need, this one's going to feel really random, but you need a call scheduling page. And this one is something I think a lot of industries need besides coaches. I use call scheduling pages, but I think it's so important for people who are doing especially one-to-one coaching. So by having a call scheduling page, you can send your clients to your website to schedule a call versus sending them out to like Calendly or a Dubsado page or Acuity or one of those, whatever website you're using for your call scheduler. Embedding that onto your website is going to allow them to stay in the experience of working with you. And so just to be clear, what I'm talking about, like, Let's say you're a life coach and people schedule calls with you. You can have a system in your business where like when it's time for them to schedule a call, you send them an automated email and then in the email, it tells them like, here's the page to schedule the call. The page is on your website. It has beautifully written instructions, a photo of you talking on the phone or something cool like that. And then they click to schedule the call and they see because of your call scheduling software, all the dates and times and stuff in their time zone. And it's only showing your availability. So if you're a coach and you're like, I don't take calls on Friday, you have all your Fridays blocked off. And you know, you're on central time, but they're on Eastern, but they still see everything in their time zone, they see your availability in their time zone. And a lot of people, you know, use call schedulers. That's the first step is just using a call scheduler. Do not do the back and forth email thing of like, Hey, I'm free at 9am central time. What time are you free? You know, like none of that. We do not want to email about scheduling calls. That's not effective. It's also a really bad client experience. So you want to use a call scheduling software. 
that's the first step really is just using a call scheduling software, but then taking a step further by embedding it into your website. If you don't know what embed means, that's kind of a weird word. It means that you're taking the code that something like Dubsado or Calendly is providing you with and you paste it into an HTML block on your website. So if you're using show it, you pick the HTML block, you drag it around and then you literally just paste the code in there. If you have a template from me, there's a training video on literally how to do this exact thing of adding your call scheduling software to your template, but it's super easy. So you want to do that and you want to have a call scheduling page. Basically, you always want to keep people on your website. It's easier on you. It's easier on your client. It helps you create systems. It helps you know your links. It's so good. Okay, in all of my templates, and I keep talking about the template shop, but this episode relates to it really well. All of my templates, both the old ones and the new ones are coming out, literally have a call scheduling page. And I love it. It's something I created because I'm like, this is a need for every industry. Like I already said, like if you're a photographer and you're scheduling meetings with your bride and groom, you should also be doing this. But especially for coaches, you guys, it's just going to help you create a better experience. So all the templates come with a call schedule page that has a form in it that people can type their info into. So you could also use it as like an application page for a mastermind or for an application page for a group coaching program, whatever it is. But you can also replace the form that's in there and paste in your Calendly code or your Dubsado code or whatever it is so people can pleasantly schedule calls with you. And I have been using these kind of pages in my business for years now. And I have one for all the different kinds of things I might need to send clients to. Like I have one for discovery calls where people haven't booked with me yet. I have one I use for my one-to-one clients. And I have one for people who are considering the template shop, how they can do um, a scheduled call with me. And it's awesome because I actually do have different availability for each of those things. Like for my one-to-one clients, I have more call availability than I do for discovery calls. Like right now, at the time of this recording, I'm not even taking any discovery calls because I'm not booking right now for one-to-one work. So it just varies a lot. But that's number five. You need a call scheduling page. So random, but it's such a game changer in your business. So the sixth thing you need, I love this one. You need to tell your own story, your own transformation story with both authority and empathy. So I talk about this concept in episodes 26 and 27 of the podcast that are both very recent right before this. So this concept of speaking to your customers' pain points in your marketing and having both empathy and authority. So listen to those episodes to get more of a dive into this one. But the idea here is that people want to know, first question, why are you an expert to coach me on this? And second question, do you actually understand my problem? And you guys, this authority and empathy stuff that I talked about in this episode, if you are a coach, it is so important for you. And you need to answer both of those questions clearly, concisely, not cutesy on your website. And yes, you need both of those things. So you need to be both an expert and someone who has empathy and understands the problem. And I really love to encourage coaches to tell your story story, your transformation story, as it relates to what you do now. And through that story and the transformation you've had, you can show why you're an expert. And a great example of this is Corinne Crabtree. She's a weight loss coach and she specializes in working with women who need to lose a hundred pounds or more. And she has a podcast called losing 100 pounds. Her business is also called fit and fat is the name. And some of you may have listened to her stuff before. I feel like I tell everyone about her podcast because I personally actually love her podcast, even though I've never lost a significant amount of weight or need to lose a significant amount of weight. But I, so I'm not even her ideal client, but I really love her perspective on nutrition, exercise and health. And I just think she's hilarious to listen to. And funny, random fact, she, this sounds so stalkerish, but she sold her house recently like a couple months ago, actually, when we bought our house, and we bought a house in a neighborhood that either is the neighborhood she was in, or is really close to it, just based on where she was saying she bought or she was selling her house from. And when we were looking at houses around here, I always was wondering, like, am I looking this house that's for sale? That is Corinne Crabtree's house. But I'm pretty sure we did not buy her old house. I feel like I would figure that out at some point. But it's just funny, though. Anyway, that's a total side note. But Corinne Crabtree, I love her stuff. I love her perspective 
perspective. And I love the way she incorporates her story into her messaging. So if you want an example of that, her stuff is great. And her website in particular, I love this statement. It reads, are you sick and tired of diets? I was. I lost 100 pounds. I'll teach you how to. That's kind of confusing at the end. How T-O-O. So she's saying, I lost 100 pounds. I'm going to teach you how to do it too. And she tells her story of going from overweight to fit um, all the time in her marketing, but also on her website. It's awesome. And it connects on both of the levels I'm talking about here because it connects on empathy of understanding the struggle of losing weight. Like she understands because she has done it, but it also has authority because she is not telling you I'm overweight. I understand how hard it is. Like, it's like, then, well, can you help me lose weight if you haven't? So instead, she has also authority of showing like she also has done it and knows how to lose weight and can teach you how. So I really love that example. You need empathy and authority. And another great example of someone I've already referenced, a third time for her, Jenna Goyu. So my friend Jenna, on her about page, she starts out by saying, this isn't about page message. It's kind of what we're focusing on here. You want this to mostly be prevalent on your about page, on your homepage. So I'm Jenna Viviano. I'm your go-to girl when it comes to all things career. A Wall Streeter turned tech startup junkie. I know what it's like to feel stuck in a soul sucking job and what it's like to feel invigorated, inspired and excited to go to work every day. My goal is to get you from stuck to thriving in your job. Like that is literally so good. Jen is an excellent copywriter. I feel like I didn't even have to help her much when we did her website because she is just so on top of copywriting, but that has it all. It shows authority that she knows what she's doing. She's telling you a message of the transformation of where she's going to take you. She literally says, I want to get you from stuck to thriving in your job. And she has experienced what her ideal client wants and she has empathy for them. And another thing I want to point out here, it is not negative kind of going back to, I guess that was my third point about like not being too negative about your messaging. Like she's able to kind of be negative in the sense of like, they feel stuck in a soul sucking job, but it's not negative on them as a person. So that their experience in life right now is negative. Not that like they're in that job because they suck and they need her help to be saved or something crazy like that. So anyway, that's a great example, authority, and it shows empathy. And in my website templates, oh my gosh, I keep saying this, but you'll find that the about pages are actually set up perfectly for you to do this, for you to do the action of telling your story. And I even put prompts for what to do with the stories. Like there's one part in most of the templates where you fill in your timeline of like your story, like literally on a cute little timeline chart. So that's like a quick way for people to see your transformation of like, usually people start it with like some of the stuff related to them being stuck. And then the end is that they're in um, a good spot. And it's just, it's such a clear visual telling of this. But then there's also laid out in the templates a way for you to like through written word, tell your story um, with prompts and all of that kind of stuff. So go look at them. It's elizabethmccravey.com slash shop if you want to see what I mean. Just look at the about pages for some of them. And again, the new ones are going to be really heavily focused on you guys, coaches. So I'm really excited to launch those. I wish they were already launched because I'm like so stoked about them. But um, those are also have exactly what I'm talking about of like an awesome opportunity for you to really tell your story in a way that relates to other people. And sometimes I also want to add this in here. Um, sometimes coaches might not feel like they have some crazy story. Like a lot of times we hear stories like the one I just gave as an example of Corinne, where it's like she did this crazy thing of losing 100 pounds and that just happens to be her actual niche also. And it's like not everyone necessarily has that, but you always have some kind of transformation story that you can tell. And if your story isn't the most compelling one, you always still want to tell your own story in your about page. But you can also focus on your client's transformation stories in your marketing on like your service page and things like that versus focusing on your own story. So just a little side note there. All right, number seven thing you need on your coaching website. This one's more of like a general marketing tip, but this is so important. So you need to niche down. And I never know how exactly to say that word. I say niche. Some people say niche. There's a lot of points. I'm gonna say niche though. Okay. So 
You need to have a niche and you need to stand for something because you guys, it's a product for anyone. It's an offering for anyone. It is an offering for no one. When everyone who wants a coach is your target audience, that's literally not an audience because no one wants just the most generalized coach out there. They want something very specific. And that's a cool thing about the coaching industry is how specific you can get and getting crazy specific in coaching helps you be more successful because it becomes so obvious to your potential client of whether or not you're the right person for them. So I want you to figure out who you want to work with very specifically. And you don't have to be crazy specific right when you start, but you want to get more specific as you go on. But obviously, when you start, you want to niche down to something like, you know, life coaching, business coaching, career coaching, yoga, whatever it is. But I'm actually, when I talk about niching down, I'm talking about a step further than that. So I'm going to use the lovely Corinne Crabtree that I adore. Corinne, if you're listening, I'd love to do your website. Okay, (laughs) using Corinne as an example again. So she's in the coaching space, right? Her niche is weight loss coaching. Okay, so that's already very like specific, but more specific than that, she's weight loss coaching for women, which literally knocks out like half the people because she doesn't work with men. And then more specific than that, her niche is women who need to lose around 100 pounds. That is so specific. But in some point, you might hear that and be like, it's too specific. She's missing people. She's going to miss people because that's too specific. Like you guys, I'm still in her audience and that's not me. So when you get really specific, you don't cancel out automatically everyone who's not in that group. You're still going to have people on the outside that enjoy your content, maybe even buy from you who aren't in that group. Like I can guarantee you she coaches women who only need to lose like 30 pounds, um, not just 100 pounds. So anyway, getting specific though, it creates so much clarity of whether or not you're right for her programs and you don't have to worry about deleting too many people out of like your potential clients. Also, I think you need to stand for something. So this goes with the idea of niching down, but you also need to stand for something, maybe even something that goes against what other people say or believe to be true kind of just a little bit out there. Like, like when you think about Instagram, when people share post, um, that get a lot of engagement, it's typically not that they're sharing, like if it's a new idea or some kind of idea, it's typically not like the the posts that get the most engagement are typically going to be ideas that are new, different, like not the same thing every single person ever says. Like that's what gets attention. That's what's going to get people to feel like they're in your tribe is being part of something. So using Chris as an example again, She stands for losing weight for good without yo-yo dieting. She stands for that you don't have to cut out entire food groups to lose weight and that it's more about what's happening in your mind than what's on the plate. And those are all stances that some people disagree with. Like there are dieting groups that are going to say you need to cut out gluten to lose weight or you need to cut out sugar completely. So she's saying the opposite that you don't need to cut out entire food groups in order to lose weight and you can lose weight for life by doing it this way. So it's like that is specific that is going to go against and ruffle some people's feathers, basically ruffling feathers. Like it's kind of what I'm talking about here when I say stand for something. That's the content people want to get behind. Like I can't emphasize that enough. I actually have a little example from my own experience, but a couple weeks ago, going with what podcast was that? Podcast number 25 about stop treating your business like a hobby. I did an Instagram post that had a little quote on it that was really popular. It got saved by hundreds of people and reposted by hundreds of people and got a lot of comments and things like that. And most of the stuff was positive, like, yeah, you go, I need to hear this. I totally agree. That was most of the reaction. But I also had people who messaged me or shared it or commented and said that they disagree with what I said. And no one was like bullying me or anything like that. But people were saying like, just wanted to say that they disagree with that message. And it's so funny to me because that is like one of the posts, you know, that had people disagree, but at the same time also had the most positive engagement on a post like that, that I've had in a while. And I think the reason is because I was taking a stance on something. And when you take a stance on something, that's maybe a little bit like 
off the beaten path, like it's a stance because not every single person is going to agree with you. That's when you're going to have the most passion behind what you're doing from other people and the most negativity of like disagreement. So anyway, you want to take a stance on stuff in your messaging and you want to niche down and not just be a life coach to everyone. So if right now you're a coach and you've thought like, oh, I really like this one particular kind of coaching, but like, you know, like maybe you want to coach people on meditation, just as a quick example. And that's the thing that you're like interested in teaching people about, but you're like, is that too niche? Like I would like what I miss people like, no, it's not too niche because you're going to be able to through your messaging, truly 100% attract people who are like crazy interested in that. And then you can become the go-to person for that type of thing, for that type of training, that type of education, the type of coaching, like whatever it is, when you niche down, you can become the go-to person more. So I actually almost didn't include that one. I, then I was driving earlier today and I was like, I need to talk about that too. So, okay. The last one, Number eight, the last thing you need on your coaching website, you need an offering structure that makes it clear what people need. So I'm not just saying you need to have one service, although I think that can be really effective too, to just have one offering like that mainly you just have this one membership site or you just do one to one coaching or you just have this one group program. Like I think that is awesome and can be a really good business model to have one like main like flagship thing. But what I'm actually saying that's even more important than that is that it needs to be crystal clear which service is right for which person. Okay, that's so huge. So I'm going to use an example from one of my one to one clients, Amber Housley, we're working on her website right now. And she's a business coach, and really just like a marketing strategist business coach does a lot of incredible things. And she has lots of different offerings, which is awesome. But with having a lot of offerings, we have to be really clear about what services work for which person, depending on what stage there are. Because you guys, if you were to like put your offer stack, like all your offerings into a pyramid, it should be like picturing like a food pyramid type of vibe right now in your head. The thing at the top is usually where you're going to start as a new business owner. And the top is the more exclusive thing, something like one-to-one coaching or a VIP day or something to that extent. And at the bottom, is more of the one to many model. But typically with your Ascension model, you want to start at the top with the really specific things that's the easiest to get into. And then you want to go out to work the one to many like so using my business as an example, I started with one to one work. And then I added more of a one to many with the template shop. So anyway, Amber, though, has a lot of stuff and her offerings really do follow that structure of like some are more on a smaller scale and some are more to many people. The pricing is also going to usually be to where the higher up thing is more expensive. The bigger thing at the bottom of the pyramid is usually less expensive. And most time as business owners, we give our programs quirky names, which is totally fine. I'm not going to tell you not to do that. But when someone is exploring your service page, it might be hard for them to tell what each thing is. So for example, Amber's mastermind has a specific name inspired coterie. I was in her mastermind. It's awesome. But just those words don't tell us enough about what it is and who it's for. We need to know that's a mastermind. And she also has events, courses and a membership site and things like that. So in her service page that we're working on, in addition to the names of each of the options, so like it's in addition to saying like the name of her mastermind, the name of her membership site, we're also very concisely and clearly saying which one is for who, like who this is best for, you know, so people understand that like the membership sites best for these people, the live events best for these people and all that kind of thing. And really, my point here is that if you have a lot of program options, you need to know who the program is for, and then say it. And it can also be smart to order things by price because typically people might start out with the lower pain thing and then transition into your higher up pain options. So like someone, for example, might take a $297 course from you, like to take the course. And then months later, they might be ready to join your membership site at say like 150 a month. And then later, they might be ready to join your mastermind at like eight 
$8,000 a year. Those are all just made up numbers for a made up person, not any specific client, but it's progression through each thing. So you want to show the progression um, clearly by telling who's right for which thing on your services page. Like, so if you're offering a mastermind, call it a mastermind. If it's one-on-one coaching, call it one-on-one coaching. Like use your cool, cutesy name you came up with. I'm not going to tell you not to do that. I think it's good to have branding for your programs. So I think that actually is a time to be cutesy, but you also want to include the word that tells people what it actually is. Otherwise, they're just going to be confused, especially if you have a lot of options. It's going to be like, well, I don't even know what that is. Is that a mastermind? Is it a group coaching program? Is it an event? Like, I don't know. So you guys say the words so people know. Okay, so that is it, you guys. There are, of course, more things you need on your coaching website. I had, before I um, outlined this episode, I had a list of like 15 things. And I was like, I'm obviously not going to talk about 15. Like, look at me. It took me like 40 something minutes to talk about just eight things. So there are obviously a lot more things, but these are the ones I feel like people often miss or overlook. And remember, I have website templates and that are going to literally set you up perfectly to do this exact list of things. Like literally all eight of these things you're going to be set up well with when you buy a template. So if you're listening to this list and you're like, that's a lot. I need some help with that. The template shop is going to be awesome to help you with this. There's even an online course. I talked about this a couple episodes ago, but there's an online course that comes with all these trains. I'm constantly adding new trainings to it, but to help you even on things like copywriting and like email marketing, like it's not just about like, here's how to work the template. It goes even deeper into like how to make it effective strategically from a marketing perspective, because you guys know I love marketing and I love helping you actually make the sale, not just have a pretty website. So that's at elizabethmccravey.com slash shop if you want to check out the templates. But now I want to recap. So to recap those eight things. Number one, you need photos of yourself, not just stock images. Number two, you need your coaching specialty stay clearly and simply in your tagline. Number three, you need a clear and aspirational message about what results you are creating for your clients. Number four, you need a blog where you share free knowledge. Five, you need a call scheduling page. Six, you need to tell your own story with authority and empathy. Seven, you need to niche down. And eight, you need an offering structure that makes it clear what people need for the stage they are in their life or business. So those are the eight things. And I hope you love them. I hope it's like exciting to you to take action on some of these things. And to close this episode out, I'm going to share a quote from the literal coach to coaches, James Wedmore. There are many coach to coaches. He's one of my favorites. Uh, And I love this quote. He says, I'm not saying building a business is easy, but making it hard doesn't mean you'll be successful. Mm, That's so good. Not saying that building a business is easy, but making it hard doesn't mean you'll be successful. So I love that quote. And I hope you'll use this episode to upgrade your coaching website to be even more effective and strategic for your business. All right, I will be back next week with another new episode. Bye for now. Next month, I'm launching a new collection of website templates that are perfect for people just like you, perfect for coaches. So head to elizabethmccravey.com slash launch to join the launch list. Also get a preview of the awesome bonuses and gifts that are going to happen during launch week. I cannot wait to celebrate with you then. Talk to you next week on a new episode.